Rust is a statically typed language. That means the compiler needs to know the type of all the variables at compile time. But providing the variable type, specifying the data type of those variables is not mandatory. The compiler can infer the data type from the value that we assign to it. So let's see what are the different data types in Rust. So we divide the data types into mainly two categories. One we call scalar data types and the second we call compound data types. So scalar data types typically hold single value whereas the compound data types will hold a list of values. So under scalar we have integers then we have floating point numbers then we have booleans and then we have cares so these integers can further have multiple types we will shortly see the different types of integers similarly boolean and under compound types we have tuples which will be a list and arrays which is also a list but it's a fixed size list so now let's start with the scalar types so we will study about scalar data types in this video and in the next video we will study about the compound data types so the first uh, scalar type is integer and integer can also be u8 i8 so u means unsigned and i will be signed so unsigned will not include the negative values so these two will be stored in 8 bits in the memory similarly u16 and i16 will take 16 uh, bits similarly uh, u32 and i32 will occupy 32 bits and then 64 and 128 bits so naturally uh, this has 128 bits so it can represent a larger number compared to this so uh, there, there are two ways of specifying a variable so one is like this so we say let a equal to 10 so here we have not specified the type but the compiler will infer that it's an integer and by default it will store it in i32 so if we don't specify the type and in the second case we are explicitly specifying that store it in 64 bit integer so here colon and then the type in order to use uh, 128 unsigned we can specify like u128 and so on so you should remember that default for integral values i32 now let's see float so float has also two types of floats one is f32 which will be stored in 32 bits in the memory and then we have f64 which will take 64 bits so here also if we don't specify the type explicitly and assign a value let's say 10.0 then default it will use f64 Com as compared to integer it was i32 but here if you explicitly specify i want to sorry there is a mistake here it should be f32 so if we explicitly specify that i want to store in f32 32 bit this float number then it will be f32 float we will see all of this in code also first let's have a brief introduction of all of this and in the boolean the keyword will be bool so it's just one type unlike float and integer where we had multiple types of floats and integers and here also it can take value of true or false so the compiler can infer that this is a boolean but we can explicitly say bool here also and assign a value we can also give an expression here and if this expression is true this variable will get a value of true otherwise false so in this case it should get a value of false and then we have care so care represents a unique code scalar value so it's more than 
just a sky value and we usually denote it within single quotes and if we are storing a character we should add a single character but we can add a unicode value also so we will do backslash u and then here we will store the unicode value so this will represent a smiley so let's see all of these uh, scalar data types in our code so this was the code that we saw earlier let's clear it up so first we will see integers so i said that by default it will be i32 so let's specify a value and even uh, this is a intelligent id it's it's automatically showing us this that it's i32 but we can verify it so we can verify by uh, assigning it the maximum value that a 32 bit integer can store and then when we add one to it we will see that it overflows so in order to get the maximum value we will use std i32 and then max so in order to get the value for i64 you do use i64 here and similarly for any other uh, data type so i have stored the maximum value that can be stored in 32 bit integers and now let's first print it i1 equal to now we will in increase it so we need to make it mutable and then i1 equal to i1 plus 1 and then we will print it again so let's run it so we see that i1 is here this large value and then attempt to add with overflow since this is the maximum value that can be stored in i32 it when we add to it it will be a case of overflow now let's store the same value to i1 but make it i64 so let's copy the value this large value i think it will not let you assign this to a i thought i64 now i am making it i64 but i am assigning it the same value now let's run it so we see that it has successfully increased the value now let's uh, to confirm let's remove it and run it again and again we get the same overflow error so this proves that uh, by default integers are stored in i32 now we will we can uh, one more point is that we can store assign multiple values at the same type assign to multiple variables and the way to do is that we will do let and then we can have i1 then i2 and we can assign let's say 1020 and then print these values and let's run it So we see that uh, i1 gets the value of 10 and i2 gets the value of 20. So this is how we will assign multiple values to integers. So let's comment it out and let's start float. So float also has f32 and f64 and I said that by default a float will be stored in 64 bit. So when we do x equal to 5.0 then it's f64 here 
and you can see the uh, id is automatically indicating to us that it's f64 and we can also explicitly assign a value f2 and then f32 equal to 10.5 so here we have explicitly mentioned f32 so it's f32 and now uh, let's again comment it out so that's floats now we will see booleans and it's denoted by keyword bool so nothing new here here also we can assign true and you can see that id is indicating that it's understood interpreted to be a bool which is correct we can also do this explicitly by writing the same thing b2 then bool and similarly we will be assigning expression to it 50 less than 20 and now let's print it let's just print b3 to see what it has got so b2 bool is false so why is it complaining this unused variable okay okay so these are just warning because we are not using these and then we see that b3 is false because 50 is not less than 20 so let's comment it out and last is the characters so let's assign C1 is A, then let's assign a Unicode value, so we will give this backslash U, then 1F601 and let's print it. and let's run it so we see that uh, c1 is a and c2 is this smiley which is represented by this unicode value so that's all for uh, data types uh, scalar data types in rust in the next video we will see about compound data types tuples and arrays so see you in the next video